Welcome everyone to another week, another Wednesday night. The fundamentals to gain inner peace with your host, Menachem Bernfeld. Every Wednesday night here, the same meeting ID at nine o'clock. Thank you very much for all of you for showing up. For those who sent in their questions, you can still ask live. So if you want, you'll raise your hand. And uh, we got some answers, some answers last week. We'll see how much we can do this week. So before we start, let's practice a little bit of mindfulness. So take a deep breath. Put both of your feet on the floor. And just with a few questions helps us come back into the room, come back in, into the moment to be mindful, to be present, become aware of how you feel, where you're coming from, what your day look like, your environment, where you are. Just becoming aware of what's going on where you are, and then turning inwards, inside to feel your body. What does it feel like? Is it relaxed, maybe nervous, tense, maybe anxious, tired, whatever you feel, just to become aware of the feeling and then to see where in your body do you feel it. And then take a breath, deep breath into that part and breathe out. That the shoulders fall. And uh, here we are. You're listening to me. That's if you're aware of that, then you're pretty much present in the moment. So before we start the question and answer tonight, like I mentioned last week, it's it's a general awareness because it's very hard to know exactly where you are with the questions. And there's probably a lot of information but to just see what you can apply, what makes sense. And if it doesn't, you become aware of that too. So last week we ended with a discussion of today's days, many people are looking to change. And it's very common, people wanna change, uh, people wanna grow. And we mentioned that you need to be aware of where it comes from. It can be positive or negative. Is it coming from a place of not being happy with yourself, with your situation, with your surroundings, with what's going on in your life? So that's why we want to change. It, it could be uh, an escape. I just don't want to be where I am. So that's very important. And then from a positive side, I'm doing great. I am very happy. And I don't need to run anywhere. I can take time off. I'm not in the rat race. I am not on my phone all day. I'm not escaping. And we, as humans, we want to grow. We don't want to stay you know, in one place. We want to do, we want to grow, coming from a positive place and seeing, you know, what could I do? How can I help? Or at work, getting things done. And the change has a different definition. It's not running away, it's growing. So to become aware of the change, is, is it escaping or growing? So that was an important awareness. I'll give you another example of why people want to change. And sometimes what I tell them is stop changing. And then at the end, you know, part of that is because if you, if you can stop, then things will change, but let's not go there yet. First, don't change anything. An example that comes up is somebody wakes up late, gets up in the morning at nine o'clock. Now, when he goes to work or it's a buffer in yeshiva or whatever it is, they get up in the morning, nine o'clock, and they feel guilty. They feel bad. They feel their whole day is, is ruined. And they're, they're trying very hard to 
wake up early, get up at seven, have, you know, a morning routine. So they're, they're not in a rush and they, it's, and they're trying, they're very hard. So it, it works once in a while, they've set alarm clocks and it just doesn't work. By the time they get out of bed, it's nine o'clock and let's become aware of that feeling. Probably a guilty feeling, feeling of a failure, a loser. My day, look what, what, what's, what's my day gonna look like again, here I am again. All of the negative thoughts, And with those negative thoughts, you can imagine what your day looks like. So I would ask him, so what do you want? I want to change. Beautiful. What would you like to get up at seven? Okay, so why don't you? I, I, I try. I've been trying for years. And it's not working. You know, ups and downs, trying and the alarm clocks and this and that. It's just not working. So what I would say is, okay, it's, it's, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, that's it. No more getting up at seven. From now on, I want you to make your routine, take a pen and paper, write down exactly what your day looks like. You get up every day at nine o'clock. And they look at me like, I can't, I can't, I can't. You see that negative, that, you know, it, it looks like there's a there is a positive in there. I'm not going to take it away. They want to get up early, but if after a while it's not working, you tried. So let's see what it is where you are now, and be there. Just be there with it, and get up at nine o'clock. And even if you get up at nine o'clock, you are still okay. You can have a productive day. And from today on, I want you to get up at nine, and start your day. And whatever you need, you know, to be productive and have to realize, bring in some positives. You're fine. You're enough. I'm okay. You're going to tell it to you over and over. This is it for now. Yes, I would love to get up at seven. But for now, I am getting up at nine. And that's it. Now, it's very hard. That change is hard because most people want to, you know, there's a reason why they want to get up earlier. But just to, to realize if, if you have that in your head and you're trying so hard and it's not working, you're walking around with negative and your whole day is full of negative and you probably feel it in your body and then you're not interested in anything. You might be walking around feeling lethargic, no interest. It's just not working because that's how your day starts. And what we're doing over here is just changing the mindset. You get up at nine, do what you need to do. Start your day with positives, and you have to tell it to you over and over. And uh, yeah, that's going to be one of the questions later somebody sent in about affirmations. To be able to tell yourself, I am fine. Yes, uh, as of now, I consciously made a decision to get up at nine. That's it. After a while, if you can change, right? That's, that's the change we're looking for. Start feeling positive with what is wherever you are and you're okay. Then eventually we can see, we can maybe change it to 8.55. Maybe, could be. But if not, if you get up every day at nine, that is productive. Every day at nine and you have a schedule. You see the difference? And I'm sure you can feel the difference. You see the difference. And that is the change we're looking for. So that's just, not, just an example of if you tried something for a while and it's not working, stop. Just stop and be okay with where you are and with who you are. And, what, what, and in that realm, in that what's going on, wherever you are, that's where you should work on. And that's it. Stay there. Positive. Build the positives. And that brings us to one of the questions somebody sent in. And we discussed a little bit last week that that I'm just not happy with where I am. Where do I start? So that's a good question, and it's a good good awareness. If you're already there, and you you know, if you you try to stop, like I mentioned, stop for a few minutes and relax, and see how you feel, and you realize you're running, and you're on your phone, and you don't want to stop, and you just want to continue on the rat race. You don't want to, but you are because it's hard for you to stop. 
And there's probably, who knows what the reason is. Again, I don't know exactly what the reason and what you're escaping from. But many times it's escaping from just being of who I am, of just being happy with who I am. So you're aware of that. Where do you start? So start with a positive list. Look around in your life and see what is working out, what is positive. And that could be a challenge for many people. I've had people who told me they have zero positives. And that, that's, that's exactly where it starts. And now and I understand why they're running, why they're always on the go, always busy. It makes sense. Because if they stop, you know who they meet. They're meeting themselves with a lot of negative. Forget about the, you know, the thoughts. You know, if you're writing down or you become aware of the thoughts in your head of what's going on. So obviously it's hard to stop and to take a deep breath and to relax and to just be. So you're in flight, fight and flight mode all day. And that's very stressful. So where do we start? Have a little bit of compassion. Feel bad for yourself. Like, you know, there, there's no such a thing as a person without positive. There's always a list of positives. You can either um, um, find a list of positive traits, positive emotions, positive, you know, look around in your life. Just try to find a few. And if it's hard, go to a friend and ask them to help you, to tell you about yourself, something nice, something good. And when they say it, just write it down and look at it. In the beginning, you're not going to believe it to say, thank you, you're trying to make me feel good. But you have to slowly take it in. And that's where perfectionism comes in. Because you believe that if you'll say I'm, a, I'm an honest person, so automatically your mind goes and says, really? It goes to that negative. So we're not perfect. We're human. We're, we're, we're all growing. And even if you're 20% honest and 80% dishonest, let's focus on that 20%. Let's start somewhere. And whatever comes up, whatever, whatever positive trait comes up, whatever somebody tells you, we need to focus on the positives. And yes, it's a challenge. Imagine a friend comes over to you and tells you they have this struggle and they don't feel good about themselves. Right away, you, would, you wouldn't have a hard time to say, what are you talking about? And you would start building their self-esteem, building them up. What are you talking about? I enjoy your presence. You know, we, we talk. You, you, you know, the way you think is, is amazing. I always call you. And uh, you wouldn't have a hard time doing it to somebody else. But for ourselves, it's hard. So either go to somebody else and ask somebody to tell you and start believing it, taking it in and feeling it. And eventually you do it to yourself. You wake up in the morning and you start with the positives, just with a positive, positive list. So that's a place where you can start. But this awareness is, is, worth, is, is worth a lot of money just to become aware that it's hard for you to stop. And then when you do stop, you start journaling, write down some positives. You can write down the negatives, the thoughts that come up. You want to be able to see it. But then you have to build the positives also. Next question. Again, if somebody has, if somebody wants to ask, they can raise their hands and you'll get to ask live. Here's a question about affirmations. I tried the affirmations. It was relaxing. But why is it so important? I'm just trying to understand how affirmations work. So positive affirmations is like somebody else telling you positive thoughts, positive ideas. Now, just by listening to those ideas, would it help? And a lot of people, they don't believe that it's going to help. So the secret is that in your mind, you have a tape a CD, a record, whatever you want to call it. There is thoughts going on in your head the whole time. And it's saying things about yourself, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and how you should feel about yourself. So it might be saying you're a failure. You're a failure. No, don't do it. People are going to find out you're a failure. 
It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Don't go there. So basically, that's affirmation. And you tell me, does it have an effect? It sure does. That's how you run your life if you're not aware of it. What we're trying to do is counteract those affirmations. So if you can sit down and say positive affirmations, say, I did great today. Things worked out. I'm going to try again tomorrow. I'm doing good. Things are working out. And you push yourself and you, you build yourself. You feel that positive. So if you can do it yourself, beautiful. But for many people, it's hard. So if you can listen to somebody else, if it's guided affirmation and you just put in the earphones, you can close your eyes and let it do its work. The next level is to understand the subconscious. They say even if you fall asleep while it's going, it has an effect. So that means you're not really conscious. You're tired. You're falling asleep. You're not thinking what it's saying. And that's beautiful because that means your conscious mind, we put to sleep. And now your unconscious mind could be listening. So that means you're not aware. You're not sitting there and trying to think, what's it saying? Do I believe it? Our conscious mind sometimes blocks it. It says it's not true. If you listen to that affirmation and you're up, you might say, yeah, 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 I don't believe it. Yeah, really. That's a conscious mind talking. So if you're tired and you're relaxed and you're falling asleep, you're not consciously paying attention. So that means we put your conscious to sleep. And your subconscious can take it in. And it, your body feels it. It feels it. And slowly, it helps you relax. And some people really fall asleep. That means it makes a difference. And that's fine. So that's how affirmation work. Try it out. Don't give up after one time. Make it a routine. Do it a few times. Put it in your schedule if it's a short one. And then eventually, you'll be able to do it yourself during the day before you start a new project. If you have to finish a project, you have a fear of certain whatever it is, you can talk to yourself. You can tell yourself the affirmation. It's fine. I'll do it. I've done it before. I'll do it again. It's okay. So all that affirmation, what's the thoughts in your head, the positive affirmation makes a difference. I hope uh, that's clear. And uh, if you have any more questions, you can always ask or send it in. So that's positive affirmations. Here is an interesting question. How does an unstable upbringing have an effect on me now as an adult? Um, yeah, that's a very good question. And I think most people would, would be able to tell you how it has an effect. Um, yeah, how do we answer that one? Good question. So the truth is we all come from somewhere. You know, I'm sure you know many people out there, different personalities, different types, different ways of thinking. And it all comes from, it started somewhere. A baby is born, clean, you know, no thoughts, no ideas, no nothing. And it's pure. They still jump around, they laugh, they cry. It's it's very it's very close to that subconscious. The conscious mind is not developed. So they're just they're just being, they're just alive. And yes, emotions, full of emotions, or just busy with their toy. There's nothing going on, no thoughts of the past, no thoughts of the future. They're not worried about tomorrow or what somebody said yesterday, nothing going on. It's pure, it's, it's amazing. And sometimes with affirmation, we can go back there with a uh, guided meditation. We can go back to that feeling of just being. And what happens is pretty, pretty young and pretty fast, this little child learns, picks up certain ideas, whether it's from parents, teachers, adults, friends and they figure out what's normal and what's not normal or if they laugh too much and they, somebody looks at them somebody says something 
So that's pretty much basic to understand that has an effect. Now, how, how, how does it have an effect the way you re act in your life today? So sometimes we're going to have to dig deeper to see what your fears are. Um, you know, where does it come from? Why do you feel that way? You might feel you're not interested in certain things. Sometimes people tell me they don't like to learn. And it's important to look back. What was the experience in school? Was it a good feeling? You know, some people have a hard time, whether it's Kumash, Gemara. Um, you, you never know how it has an effect. But just to realize how we pick up ideas, and that's how we believe, you know, we believe if our parents are a certain way, and we look up to our parents, we look up to the teachers, and we say, okay, this is how we should be. And we subconsciously make up in our mind, that's how we will be. And this is it. We get shaped pretty early up, early in life. Now that's in a regular, regular case. Now imagine growing up in a in a chaotic situation. I'm um, talking about divorce, talking about fighting, talking about illness, parents not available, parents busy, or in school not being successful. All of that shapes are, are the way of thinking it shapes the way of the way we think about ourselves people might have told told us things you know if a parent wasn't available you're sitting in the shopping carts in the store and you ask your father or your mother can i please have that candy and they're having a hard day because they didn't pay the bills and they're on their phone and they have to shop and pick up the other kids and they say stop stop it no not at all don't do this again and then after a while, this, this child is like, oops, I guess I, I don't deserve, or I better not do that again. They learn. Now, when we're young, we don't have that mind to think, wait a second, maybe it has nothing to do with me. Could be the teacher had a hard day, or friends are making fun, or parents. So we're not old enough to sit down and say, wait a second, what happened? And that doesn't mean I'm bad, nothing, nothing wrong with me. It's just the other person was going through a hard time. We're too young for that. So we pick up and it shapes us. And that's how we look at ourselves. And now later on in life, it's, it's time to sit down, relax and say, wait a second, let me see where I am. What are the things holding me back? What are my thoughts? What's the way I look at myself? How do I feel about myself? And... Yeah, it does go back to see where it comes from. And for a lot of people, they would benefit from having a therapist, a licensed therapist to help them with uh, modalities, with certain ideas to go back there and eventually start the healing. But not everybody needs it. And some people could do it on themselves or just with some you know, guided meditations, just looking back, becoming aware, and then taking the action that's needed to move on. So that's talking about a chaotic situation. And now today, what they discuss is emotional neglect, something that we talk a lot about. Um, again, we're not here to blame anybody, but where we're coming from, grandparents after the war, the only way they were able to continue is they, they had to shut down the emotions and to do the right thing, you know, to continue and send the kids to school. Can't, it's really hard to imagine what they went through. After losing families and losing everything and starting new, I can't imagine. I can't imagine, again, reading these stories. We had some strong people and our grandparents, most of our grandparents were very, very strong. And this is what they did. They had to continue, put the past, whatever happened, put it behind them and go on in life. And they, they were living in that fight and flight mode in a, in, a, in a fear. First of all, who knows if it's not gonna happen again? Second of all, are my kids gonna grow up the way I want them to grow up? Of, you know, we have to make sure that it, they stay where they are, you know, to stay from and the way we want them to be, because that's the only thing we have. 
And the only way to, you know, if there was anything they didn't like, they made sure that it should go their way. It was the only way how they could continue. So again, no blaming. It's just becoming aware. And then our parents, and then us, and our kids, and our grandkids, sometimes the second generation. So some people say, you know what? I'll let my kids have everything. I'll be so nice to them. Whatever they want, they'll get. And that's also not healthy. Coming from a not healthy place. Kids need stability. They need to, uh, you know, somebody to have the, some structure. That's what kids need. And they beg for it. But they, sometimes we're too harsh. Or we're too lenient. But in a healthy way to understand what the kid needs to be there like we listen, a listening ear, not to get triggered when they bring up their emotions. And now we have to hear it. And it's something that triggers us. And we might say, okay, it's fine. Don't worry. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't push it away. Just listen. If that's how they feel and that's the fear, then that, that's how they feel. Just validation, like with this dust. So, so it's, it's, yeah, to answer this question on one foot, there's a lot there, a lot of awareness. But the, the first step is just to be able to look back. And um, I did get a lot of feedback of, of a lot of people that had just, just the benefit of seeing, seeing the type of parents and how you grew up and see how you feel today or, any, or the adults, uh, teachers, and to see where you come from, it helps a lot of people to say, you know what, that's something I don't enjoy now. It's something I don't appreciate. I'd like to do something different. And then they choose to do something different. Now, people get scared. You're opening a box, uh, you know, can of worms. You're really giving them the option of being different. So let's just stop over there. Just become aware of the fear of what did you hear when I said doing something different? What came to your mind? Just be aware of it. If you want, you can put it in the chat. Because by many people, it's that that's Yiddishkeit. How could they be different? This is Yiddishkeit. But I'm not talking about Yiddishkeit now. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about um, even, even doing uh, something different at work, a different job. You never know. You might pick it up from somewhere. You believe you're good at something or you're not. Who knows where it's coming from? Why do you think so? Okay, we'll do one more question. Um, are you supposed to do meditation and affirmations every day? And if so, same time of the day. Okay, so now, first of all, if you want to change routine, it's very, very important to be able to put it in the same time of day. Because if not, you'll see sometimes it works or sometimes it doesn't. But we have a routine. And routine is good. And slowly we can change, put in some things in that routine. So before going to sleep is a tricky time. A lot of people want to do things before they go to sleep. And then they're halfway asleep and they haven't done it. So it's a tricky time. But find time in your day that you have that you can stop. And you could just spend time, whether it's sitting and doing a little bit of meditation. That means just stopping for five minutes with a timer or with affirmation or meditation. So if you have a time you can do it every day, that would be beautiful. And it doesn't have to be done every day, but the more you do it, the more it has an effect. And somebody else sent in a question that they don't see um, the change. So again, how many years are you walking around with the other affirmations that you always have in your head? It might be 20, 30 years. So give it time. Give it time and slowly let it let it sink in, listen to it again and again, and eventually you will see a difference. But give it time because it's fighting many years of affirmations. Okay, beautiful. So that's it for tonight. If there's any question I didn't answer, or any questions came up while I was talking, or if it triggered anybody, something I said and you didn't like, please let me know. So first become aware of it, and then you can send it to coachmanathem at gmail.com. And let's talk about it. Becoming aware, let's put it on the table.
Sometimes it is scary. But having that conversation, even though it might be a little scary for a few minutes, afterwards you will feel liberated. Something inside of you that needs to be discussed. If you can do it yourself, beautiful. Reach out to somebody that you can talk to that understands, therapists or a coach, so that they can sit there with you and just see what's going on. So I would like to thank all of you for showing up tonight. And if you're listening to the recording, thank you very much. Any questions that you have, you can send it to coachmenachem at gmail.com. Tonight was class number 45. And from, for all the information that we discussed, you can go to the recordings at menachembernthal.com. On the top left, you can get all the recordings of the fundamentals to gain inner peace, where we discussed a lot of these ideas to become aware of the emotions. And many people tell me emotions are for women, not for men. And men will tell me, I don't work with emotions. I know that. <laughs> I understand that. But if you're alive, there are emotions. And believe it or not, you know, those, those things that you do and the fears that you have, that's emotions. So we all have it. We want to live with it, understand it, so that we can be in control and not our emotions in control of us. Thank you very much and have a good night. I'll see you next week. Amir Hashem.